بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we've reached uh, this uh, chapter inshallah and um, we'll continue and complete this uh, chapter today by the permission of Allah and just to let you know as well, you brothers, that uh, I think we only have about 40 pages to go, I think, which roughly the, the pace we're going at is another four to five lessons and we finish this book. So we'll finish this book, uh, this book, inshallah, in the next four to five lessons. Then we'll move on to a different book, inshallah. But I'll mention that closer to the time. <clears throat> inshallah, let's just let me maximize the... Get the page scale right. Okay, inshallah, that should be okay. Okay, so then the Shaykh he moved on to the next chapter uh, entitled um, Al Istiqraru Fil Madinati Wa Nuzuli Baqi Sharai Wa Ikmal Deen. So, in here, this chapter entitled The Remaining in Medina, as we uh, know that. The Muslims, they made Hijra, they emigrated to Medina and that was the first uh, Islamic state of, for the Muslims, country of the Muslims, uh, Islamic government, an Islamic country uh, for the Muslims. So they remained there. So this subject is going to cover that, the remaining in uh, Medina, al Medina, and the revelation of the remainder of the uh, legislation. So do you remember that um, the Sheikh was mentioning the previous two lessons, I believe, two or three lessons. The Sheikh mentioned, Hafizullah, about, uh, about the Tawheed being proclamated first and then Salah being made a legislation and then the, and then the rest of the, uh, legisl- uh, the legislature was revealed in al Madina. So then the Sheikh, he mentions here the first paragraph he says فلما استقر بالمدينة أمر ببقية شراع الإسلام مثل الزكاة والصوم والحج والجهاد والآذان وال والأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر وغير ذلك من شراع الإسلام أخذ على هذا عشر سنين وبعدها توفي صلوات الله وسلامه عليه ودينه باق وهذا دينه لا خير إلا دل الأمة إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا هضرها منه والخير الذي دلها عليه توحيد وجميع ما يحبه الله ويرضاه والشر الذي حضره منه الشرك وجميع ما يكرهه الله ويأباه بعثه الله إلى الناس كافة وافترض الله طاعته على جميع الثقلين الجن والإنس. So the Sheikh he mentions uh, in this opening paragraph of this chapter, he says so when the Muslims on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and the Muslims they remained in Medina and they took a, a place of um, uh, uh, you know, a safe place, a place that's safe for them. They, their govern, they formed their government there. It was the first Islamic state, as you know. Then Allah revealed the rest of the legislature, as we have it today. So the rest of the laws, the laws, Islamic laws. And the Sheikh mentioned some examples like a zakat, the obligatory charity, the obligatory fasting, so. Uh, in the month of Ramadan, as we know it, Al-Hajj, making the pilgrimage to Allah's house, Al-Kaaba, 
and jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likes uh, and likewise the adhan the call to prayer and also commanding the good and forbidding the evil an important principle in our deen as we all know um if we see something bad you know we 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 inform the people about its evil and to prevent them from it and we also you know call people to all that which is good and doing good and other than that from the uh, legislation or from the legislation of Islam and this took about 10 years so this was around the period of 10 years in Medina yeah and after that the Prophet وسلم, he passed away and his religion still remains this is his deen as we know it it, it still remains even in our time as we know it's going to remain until the last day, right? And there isn't anything that is good except that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he showed his Ummah, right? It, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't leave anything. He, he mentioned to us everything that is good, he mentioned it to us. And everything that is evil, he warned. He warned us from it. And from those good things that the Prophet Sallallahu all the good things that the Prophet Sallallahu showed us and pointed us towards and directed us towards, the best of that is a tawheed as we know it, a tawheed and all of and the, and all of the things that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala loves and is pleased with, and likewise the evil, all that which is evil has been mentioned to us and has been uh, uh, shown to us what is evil and we've been warned from it and at the top of that as we know it is shirk the opposite to tawheed and all that which Allah dislikes and rejects right and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent his prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he sent him on this mission as we know it, his message, what his message is, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he came to the people, and he completed everything that Allah sent him to do. He completed the message. There isn't anything that's left out. It's a complete message, and it's completed. And Allah uh, um, has made an obligation for all of the creation. That they be obedient to him. This is what Allah uh, commands us with. Being obedient to him. Whether we are from the jinn. Or whether we are from mankind. Humankind. So this is what the shaykh mentions here in this paragraph. Then the shaykh goes on to mention the evidence. So he says. وَدَلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا And that's... Uh, from Surah Al-A'raf, verse 158. So if we, as we do every lesson, inshallah, we'll go to the meanings, the English meanings of these trans- the translation, and it is Surah Al-A'raf, verse 158. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O mankind, verily, I am sent to you all as a messenger of Allah. So this is what the meaning of this ayah is. And then the shaykh says, وَأَكْمَلُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الدِّينِ And that by the Prophet Wasallam, Allah completed that revelation and the message that we need and that we require. And then also another evidence, وَدَلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَلَىٰ الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ That's from Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 3. Uh, it's a long verse, so let's go to the part that we the Sheikh mentions. Uh, let's see. Let me find it. Give me one second, brothers. This day. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong. That's the wrong part. So give me one second because it starts just like that. Um, give me one second, brothers.
Yeah, here we are. Sorry. So I found it. It's just told in. This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and I've chosen for you Islam as your, as your religion. So that's the meaning of, of the ayah. And so the Shaykh, he goes on to say, he says, This is basically See, then the Sheikh says that he says here in this paragraph and that which has preceded in terms of mentioning regarding the Sharia, the Sheikh says here that the Sharia, as we know through the lessons that we were going through, we realize that it come bit by bit, step by step. It, it's a step, it was a stepwise approach. And this is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Sharia came bit by bit, step by step. Just like how the Quran was revealed, of course, step by step. It wasn't just sent as one book like this. It was step by step to allow the people to allow them to uh, change their ways in the best way possible and to improve bit by bit as the revelation came. They followed that revelation. And likewise, the laws that also came down, of course, through the revelation. And then the Sheikh uh, mentions here that uh, that uh, just a short period of time, a very short period of time uh, before the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah sent down this ayah that we just read: "Al yom akmatu lakum dina kum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al Islam dina." As we we mentioned, we read the the meaning of the ayah in English, and so the Sheikh mentions that, and that shows us that. That is a clear evidence for everyone with a, a normal sound intellect. They can understand what this means that Allah completed the religion and his favor upon the, uh, upon us, essentially the ummah of the Muslims, and that the religion is completed. There's no there's no deficiency in it, nor is there uh, um, anything missing from it. So there's no deficiency. And there's no need to add anything to it. It's complete. It's a complete. It's complete, and there, there's no taking away from it or adding to it. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say, he says, "Falam yutawaf sallallahu alaihi wasallam illa baada an akmal Allahu bihi adin wa tamma bihi niyama wa anzal alaihi qawluhu taala al yom akmal tu lakum dina kum wa atmam tu alaihi niyamati wa radi tu lakum al Islam adina." نزلت هذه الآية على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو وهو واقف في عرفة في في هجة الوداع من يوم الجمعة وعاش بعدها صلى الله عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم مدة مدة يسيرة وانتقل إلى الرفيق الأعلى وترك أمته على المحجة على المحجة البيضاء ليلة ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك. so just this part of the paragraph on this page we will we'll go through that first and then we'll carry on reading. so then the sheikh mentions again he says that the the prophet <coughs> did not pass away except uh, except after Allah subhanahu wa taala completed the the deen through him of course he's Allah's messenger and and the Sheikh reiterates this because it's important to understand this. Um, because a lot of people, um, sadly, uh, don't understand this. And this is the reason why uh, the person has an issue with their religion. And they start doing things that are not from the Quran and the Sunnah. So the Sheikh mentions this. And he says that Allah completed through the Prophet Wasallam this message, this Quran and the Sunnah uh, and this deen and this religion. And the favor upon him and upon the Muslims. And then the Sheikh mentions again that this ayah was mentioned uh, uh, when the Prophet ﷺ was making his final Hajj, uh, Hajjatul Wada, 
and it was on a Friday and he was standing in Arafah. He was standing in Arafah and this ayah was revealed to him. Yeah, so that's a context of the how, where it was revealed, when it was revealed. Yeah, just to help us understand. And um, the Sheikh says that just a short time after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. And the Sheikh mentions here in this final line, li- fin- final couple of lines over here at the end of this page, he mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he left us with a clear message, a clear religion. And the term used is al mahajat al bayda a clear, a white way. Uh, in Arabic, they say like a white way, a white, clean path, so to speak. The night is like it's day. As we know, the night, we know when it's night, when it's dark. And like when, when the sun comes out, arises, it's day. That's how how clear it is. Just how we can differentiate between night and day. That's exactly how this is. And that's the analogy that's used. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, وَفِي هَذِي الْآيَةِ شَهَادَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَلَىٰ كَمَالِ هَذَا الدِّينِ وَشُمُولِهِ لِمَصَالِحَ الْإِبَادِ وَهَلَّقَ ذَايَاهُمْ وَمَشَاكِلُهُمْ إِلَىٰ تَقُومُ سَاعَةٌ إِلَىٰ تَقُومُ سَاعَةٌ وَهُوَ صَالِحٌ لِكُلِّ زَمَانٌ وَمَكَانٌ لَا يَحْتَاجُونَ بَعْدَهُ إِلَىٰ شَرِيعَةٍ أُخْرَىٰ أَوْ إِلَىٰ كِتَابٍ يَنْزِلُ أَوْ إِلَىٰ رَسُولٍ يُبْعَثُ بَعْدَ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فما من قضية تجد وما نازلة تنزل إلى يوم القيامة إلا وفي شريعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حلوها والحكم فيها ولكن الشأن في من يحسن الاستنباط والاستدلال في الأحكام والقضايا فإذا توفر أهل العلم وأهل الاجتهاد الذين تتوفر فيهم شروط الاجتهاد فإن هذه الشريعة فإن هذه الشريعة كاملة وفيها حل المشاكل كلها كلها وإنما يحصل النقص من ناحيتنا نحن من ناحية قصور العلم وعدم إدراك ما أنزل الله سبحانه وتعالى أو من ناحية الهوى بأن يكون هناك هوى يصرف عن الحق وإلا فهذا الدين وإلا فهذا دين صالح وشامل وكامل قد أغنى الله به الأمة الإسلامية إلى أن تقوم ساعة إذا ما عملت به حق العمل حق العمل ورجعت إليه في أمورها. So this is a long paragraph where the Sheikh is saying here that and in in this in this ayah as in uh, as in the previous ayah if we go up. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum The ayah, this is the Sheikh's mentioning Again, he says there's a testification From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala On the completeness of this deen And it's uh, Over archedness It encompasses everything It covers everything essentially This is what the Sheikh is saying And it covers and takes care of And is able to deal with All the affairs of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, <coughs> and in their interests and their benefits. And it, it it helps resolve and find solutions for their affairs and their problems. Up until the, the last hour. This is how this deen is complete. All times, doesn't matter what time period you're in, which generation you're in, this deen is for every time and every place. And so, for that reason, or for one of the reasons, this is the reason why our Prophet Wasallam, as you know, is a final messenger and prophet. There won't be anybody, any prophet or messenger that will come after him, and there will not be any law, new law, that will come after him. This is it now. Up until Yawm al the Day of Judgment. And so, this is what the Shaykh has mentioned here, uh, uh, halfway through this paragraph. And the Sheikh also says that sometimes we might see uh, an issue, for example, um, where we may not be able to come to a, a solution or resolution by using Islamic legislation. And the Sheikh says, he makes a very important point. He says that if there's plenty of people of knowledge and they are able to extract the meanings and the 
and the legis uh, and the legislations etc and they have the knowledge then everything's fine but when there is a loss of knowledge a lack of knowledge a lack of understanding then the uh, shortcomings are from our side because of our laziness or slackness to uh, learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to then be able to apply uh, the rulings etc um, and uh, and so forth so this is what the shaykh mentions here so it makes a, that's a very good point to be honest and uh, it helps us because you know you come across people saying things like oh no that was at that time at the time of the prophet sallam now things are different it's not the case this deen is for all time periods since the prophet sallam came with it uh, and revealed was revealed to him up until the day of judgment as the shaykh has mentioned so this is what the shaykh is mentioning here and so and also it mentions the shaykh mentions a few other points uh, which we should mention here as well uh, so i don't forget uh, towards the end of this paragraph the shaykh he says um that we may come to a wrong conclusion or we may find that we're not able to reach uh, a conclusion or a ruling or anything that's because it could be to do with the lack of knowledge as mentioned before it could also be to do with our own desires it could be that we want to follow our own desires more than the actual ruling and the sharia and, and so there's different reasons for that uh, shortcoming and it's nothing to do with the quran and the sunnah what the prophet ﷺ came with so then the shaykh goes on to say says qala ta'ala فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُ That's from Surah An-Nisa verse 59. So if we go to Surah An-Nisa verse 59. O oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Shaykh mentions that here. I'll read the whole ayah. O oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those of you Muslims who are in authority. And if you differ in anything. So this is where we need to pay attention. And if you differ in anything amongst yourselves, refer it to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa If you believe in Allah and in the last day, that is better and more suitable for final determination. So the Shaykh brings this evidence for us. And he says, Arraddu ila Allahi huwa arraddu ila kitabillah wa arraddu ila rasooli ba'da wafati huwa arraddu ila sunnatihi qala ta'ala وَمَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَحُكْمُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَهَذِي الْآيَا فِيهَا رَدٌ فَلَا الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الشَّرِيَةَ الْإِسْلَامِيَةَ بِالْقُصُورِ أَوْ النَّقْسِ مِنَ الْمَلَاحِدَةِ وَالزَّنَادِقَةِ أَوْ أَنْصَافِ الْمُتَعَلِّمِينَ الَّذِينَ قَصَرَتْ أَفْحَامُهُمْ عَنْ إِدْرَاكُ أَسْرَارِ هَذِي الشَّرِيَةَ So I'll just stop there for a second. We'll go step by step. So then the Shaykh mentions uh, here he says, he says, so we should, in if there's if we're caught up in an affair and we're not sure what to do with it, then we always in that affair you always return that affair or that situation. It goes back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It goes to back to the Book of Allah and it goes back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sunnah. This is what the Sheikh is saying. So if you uh, uh, and so then the Sheikh mentions here an ayah. Here he says. Uh, so if you go to Surah Al-Shura verse, one, uh, verse 10 We'll see Surah Al-Shura verse 10 The meaning and in, who, uh, and in whatsoever you differ The decision thereof is with Allah He is the ruling judge And say O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To these polities Such is Allah my Lord In whom I put my trust And to him I turn in all of my affairs And repentance So the affair returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And uh, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is the case, as the Shaykh mentions here. He says this ayah, uh, it uh, it is a refutation of those who attack the Sharia, uh, the Islamic legislation, with um, incompleteness. For example, uh, you know where it, it, they say that ayah is lacking, and you know there's deficiency, etc. Such as the people like the atheists, the uh, heretics. Uh, and those uh, uh, people uh, who uh, think they have knowledge uh, and sadly their intellects have cut them short in being able to understand the meanings of the 
Sharia and to be able to extract the rulings of the Sharia because they don't have the knowledge. Then they come to this conclusion, as the Sheikh mentioned. So then what they've done is, the Sheikh says here, فَنَصِبُوا الْقُصُورِ إِلَى الشَّرِيعَةِ وَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ الْقُصُورَ مِنْ عِنْدِهِمْ هُمْ فَفِيهَا رَدٌ عَلَى مَنْ اتَّهَمَ الشَّرِيعَةَ بِالنَّقْصِ وَأَنَّهَا لَمْ يَتَنَاوَلْ هَاجَاتَ الْإِبَادِ وَمَصَالِهِ الْإِبَادِ إِلَى أَنْ تَقُومُ الصَّعَةِ وقال إنها مخصوصة بالزمان الأول لأن كثير من الجهال إذا قيل لهم هذا الحكم الشرعي قالوا هذا زمان الرسول وزمان الأول أما الآن تغيرت الأحوال وتبدلت الأمور والأحكام الشريعة هذه لأناس مضوا ولمشاكل انتهت يقولون هذا وهذا كفر بالله عز وجل وتكذيب لقوله تعالى اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم أكمل الله الدين لهذه الأمة إلى أن تقوم ساعة لكل زمان ولكل مكان ولكل جيل من الناس وفيها رد أيضا على المبتدئة الذين يحدثون, يحدثون إبادة من عند أنفسهم وينسبوها إلى الدين وليس لها دليل من كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم So then the shaykh he says then what they do is they attribute uh, this uh, deficiency or lack thereof which they think in the Islamic legislature and, and they say oh but at the same time, they don't know that the shortcomings yeah, or their short-sightedness is actually from themselves. It's not from uh, Allah's law and Islamic law. And so in that, there's a reputation upon those people who attack the Sharia with uh, shortcomings, like as in it's not complete, with the deficiency. And that... Uh, and likewise, they say, for example, that it doesn't, uh, you know, cover uh, the needs of uh, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their benefits uh, it, uh, towards uh, until the uh, hour. So they're trying to say the opposite. They say, oh, indeed. So th- uh, this is about the people of uh, falsehood. They say that it's it's specific to the first time period, i.e. the period of Prophet Sallallahu it's only uh, specific to that. That's what they say. They say that uh, because many, uh, and then the Sheikh says, because many of the ignorant ones, they, it said to them, oh, this uh, uh, Sharia, this uh, Islamic legislation, they say, they say, or they said, this is, or this was to do, this Islamic legislation was with regard to the uh, time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, i.e. the first time period. They say, as for now, you know, the affairs and conditions have changed. Uh, you know, things have changed. Time has changed. You know, people have changed, etc. And the and and the sh- the rulings of the Sharia were for the people who have gone. They no longer exist. I.e., the first time, you know, at the time of the Prophet. And those problems that the Sharia came to resolve, so they say, are finished as well. But we all know that that's untrue. But the Sheikh is mentioning to us uh, just for completeness. And they say this. And whoever says this, it's disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the Sheikh says. And it's a lie. Because why? And, and they're lying. Whoever says this, they've lied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, why? Because going back to the ayah on the previous pages, Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. Today, this day, I have uh, completed and perfected. Your religion for you. Allah completed the deen for this ummah, for this nation, the Muslim nation, up until the establishment of the hour. For And it's for every time period, every place, every generation of people. And in that is a refutation also upon the people who innovate in the religion, the mubtadi'ah, 
the ones who innovate and make religious innovations in the religion and create newly invented acts of worship within the religion and it's from them own selves but they attribute it to the deen even though it's not from the deen there's no evidence for it no authentic evidence from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there's no as the Shaykh says there's no evidence here from the kita, uh, from uh, the book of Allah and the Sunnah of his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so this is this long paragraph this is what the Shaykh was saying here then the Shaykh goes on to say he says وَإِنَّ مَبْتَدْعُوهَا بِاسْتِحْسَانِهِمْ أَوْ بِ تَقْلِيدِهِمْ لِمَنْ يُحْسِنُونَ بِهِ الظَّنْ مِنَ الْمُخْرَفِينَ وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَطَامِئِ وَشَهَوَاتِ وَيُحْدِثُونَ فِي الدِّينِ إِبَادَةً مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ وَقَدْ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ وَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِذْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِذْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ So then the Shaykh goes on to say here in this paragraph he says and in fact these people who invent these newly uh, uh, created uh, types of worship in the deen then they do it because they see good in it they see good in it and they think that they could do better and do more and they see good in it or they're just blind following somebody else who had seen good in that action and then spread it to the other people. And these people are foolish, the Sheikh says. And they're, they're there from the foolish ones and from the people of, uh, you know, of desires, basically. They create newly invented acts of worship in the deen and they do this and Allah has not given them any authority whatsoever as we know from the ayah that was previously mentioned because that shows us what that Allah had completed his favor upon the Prophet ﷺ and completed his deen. So if something's complete, you can't add to it, right? It's simple. If something's complete, you don't add to it. And in this hadith as well, where the Shaykh mentions here that we read, just shortly there, من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فورد. Whoever creates a newly invented affair or brings something new to this religion, في أمرنا meaning this religion, this affair, as in this religion of of Al Islam, that is not from it, will have it rejected. What does it mean? It means that whoever creates something, even if they're doing it, it's not accepted from them. It will be thrown back to them. It will go back to them. It will be rejected. And also the Prophet ﷺ said, also, and this is, uh, we also read this at the start of uh, the lesson as well, part of the, uh, 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 the khutbah at the start. And that is, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ So, uh, that, and be warned, and be warned from all the newly invented affairs or matters. For indeed, every newly invented matter is a bid'ah is a religious innovation and every religious innovation is misguidance and every misguidance leads to the hellfire. So that's a stern warning from the Prophet Wasallam. And then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, فَالَّذِي يَحْدُثُ عِبَادَاتِ لَيْسَ لَهَا دَلِيلٍ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَلَا مِنْ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ <coughs> yeah, sorry. فإنه متهم لهذا الدين بأدم التمام وهو يريد أن يك وهو يريد أن يكمل الدين من عنده ولا يعترف بتكميل الله له فما لم يكن دينا في أحد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنه لا يكون فإنه لا يكون من بعده دينا أبدا فهذا رد على هذه الطوائف الطائفة التي تقول إن الإسلام لا يصلح لكل زمان أو الذين يبتدعون البدع المحدثات التي ليس لها دليل من كتاب الله وسنة رسوله وينسبونها إلى الدين ففي هذه الآية, الآية رد عليهم لأن الدين أكمله الله سبحانه وتعالى
So then in this uh, paragraph, the Sheikh mentions, he says, so those who, you know, create these newly invented acts of worship and there's clearly no authentic evidence for it from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and no from the sunnah of his prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then indeed, therefore, indeed it is an attack. It's an attack. And it's like an accusation uh, that one, when he does this, it's an accusation. It's like he's accusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of not completing the message through the Prophet sallallahu basically. And so there's something missing that the person has to do. Or, or he's saying that um, the Prophet sallallahu uh, didn't, he forgot something or he left out something unintentionally or intentionally. So these are grave matters now. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says here, uh, and he and this person, then he doesn't uh, confess uh, and, and doesn't openly proclaim that Allah has completed this deen. Because if he, if he, because he's adding things to it, meaning that it's not complete yet. In other words, so the Sheikh says that here that, you know, that which wasn't from the religion at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu then it's not going to be part of the religion ever. As in those innovations, those newly invented matters in religious, uh, from religious circumstances, right? This is what the Sheikh says. So then this, the Sheikh says here that um, this is a, a refutation upon those groups. The, the first one that I mentioned earlier said the first group that says, uh, indeed, Islam, it does, it's, not, it's not upright and correct for every time period. And uh, and also uh, those who create newly invented acts of worship and and introduce new things into this deen that is complete. And they have no evidence for it from the book of Allah or the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they wrongfully attribute it to the religion of, of al-Islam. And so in this ayah, as we read a few times already, is uh, is a refutation and a rebuttal to those people, um, uh, uh, those people who, who do these kinds of things. And then I just want to add an extra benefit here that if you add something, if you say that, so if on one hand, let's say that group, the first group that says, um, let's say that says, oh, this religion is not uh, perfect for, for all time periods. It was only for, like as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, it's only for the early time, the first time period, the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? Then he, this person or this group says that there's a deficiency. Right? <clears throat> so now this group is, in other words, attacking the Prophet ﷺ, saying that he left something out. Yeah? Saying that he left something out, and then of two possible uh, conclusions here. They're saying that either the Prophet ﷺ left it out because he either betrayed us or he, he, uh, he betrayed us and, and hid knowledge from us or that he forgot, etc. And Audu Billah, we, we don't believe that, but this is essentially what they're saying. If they're saying that there's a deficiency, they're saying that he's left it out because he was a messenger and Allah charged him with this messengership to, to complete the deen. And he came and completed his message, right? We know that, but this is what they're saying from the angle. The other angle is, uh, towards the end of this paragraph, the other group, the second group, and the other angle is what? The people who add things to the deen. They add newly invented matters. Just perfect timing for us in this month, Rabbi Lawal, is what are people doing? Hanging lights on the windows, like it's Christmas. Same similarities between the Christians and the Muslims. Some of these Muslims that are doing that, they're celebrating the birth of the Prophet. And we know if you look at the history books uh, from the Muslims, from the uh, from the uh, Islamic uh, history, you will not find that there's a day that has been a consensus on one day. So first of all, you never know what day is. And in, and and but what the one of the sheikhs said, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, in one of his uh, lectures, did mention a while back. I remember watching this lecture that the only thing that is actually confirmed is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died in this month on, 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 on I think it was on a Monday if I'm correct C correct me if I'm uh, wrong it was on a Monday so that's the only uh, time that we can that we know and is confirmed of his, of his death 
So in actual fact, if you think about it, they they are celebrating the Prophet's death. What was that? So that's how the shaitan tricks the people into committing uh, innovations. And, and, and so, so this group of people who are doing newly invented matters, and there's many that people do. This is just one example relevant, I guess, to uh, this month, Rabi Al-Awwal, that uh, some of the people do. And they do it wrongly because there is no evidence whatsoever from the Quran or the Sunnah, authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. And so what are they saying then? They are saying that I, the Prophet uh, also, you know, you know, it was missed something out. He's, he's, he didn't complete the deen. He didn't complete his message. They are accusing the Prophet Wasallam in this way that he didn't complete his message. He left something out. But we know from the evidences during this lesson anyway, and maybe previously as well, that there isn't a good thing that the Prophet Wasallam didn't tell us about. If there was a good thing, he told us about it. If there was a bad thing, he told us about it. Right? So, you know, you can see how grave these actions can be. You know, when you think about it and ponder over them. So, um, I just wanted to share that with you, brothers. So then the Shaykh, he, he moves on and he says, فَلَا مَجَالَ لِزِيَادَ فِيهِ وَلَا النُّقْسَانِ وَلَا مَجَالَ لِلْتَشْكِيكِ وَالتَّلْبِيسِ بِأَنَّهُ لَا يَسْلُحْ لِأَهْلِ الزَّمَانِ الْمُتَعَخِرِ اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم هذا كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وهو أستق القائلين وقال تعالى وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا هذا هذا آخر ما هذا آخر ما نزل على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو شهادة من رب العالمين في هذا الدين بالكمال والشمولية والصلاحية لكل زمان ومكان فقوله تعالى خطاب لهذه الأمة من أولها إلى آخرها وليس خطابا للجيل الأول فقط إنما هو خطاب لكل الأمة إلى أن تقوم الساعة So then the Sheikh mentions here <coughs> that he says that there's no place there's no place for introducing extra things in the deen in terms of worship. There's no place for it. And likewise, we've established there's no extra adding and there's no taking away and there's no saying that there's a deficiency and there's no place for doubts and there's no place for uh, deceiving, deception. Why? Because the deen of Islam, it is upright uh, for every for every people in every place and every time period. And then the Shaykh quotes, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا As we uh, went through the meaning at the start of the lesson. This is what the Shaykh says here. And he also says that this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, of course, when Allah speaks, it's the truth and nothing but the truth. And we take it as the truth. And nothing but the truth. So then, the Shaykh he says here that he says that this ayah, as as he established and told us earlier, he said that this was the 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 final from the final ayahs that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu and this is a testification from the Lord of the worlds about this deen, you know, for this deen, deen al Islam, that it is complete, that it it encompasses and it con- it covers every thing in terms of the, rect- uh, the rectification and uprightness for the people in every time period and in every place. Then the Shaykh says, فَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى كِتَابٌ لِيَادِ الْأُمَّةِ مِنْ أَوْلِهَا إِلَىٰ خِلَىٰ So then the Shaykh says here um, that, uh, that the speech of Allah here is mentioned, this is for the Ummah, from the start of the Ummah to the end of it, the first of it to the end of it. And it isn't just a speech or, 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 or an address that's being made to the first generation of Muslims. It is for every generation of the Muslim Ummah. Up until the hour is, is established. So this is what the Shaykh said here. So then the Shaykh says, Amma So we, the Shaykh has covered the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah? Now, so now he's talking about uh, uh, consensus. The Shaykh says, Amma 
أجمعت أجمعت الأمة على وفاته صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يخالف في هذا إلا المخرفون الذين يقولون إن الرسول ما مات وينفون الموت عن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا كلام ساقط كلام مردود واضح يرده الحس والواقع فإن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم توفي بين أصحابه وغسل وكفن وصلي عليه ودفن عليه الصلاة والسلام هل هذه الأعمال تعمل مع إنسان حي أملة صلى الله عليه وسلم معاملة الأموات غسل وكفن وصلي عليه ثم دفن صلى الله عليه وسلم في قبره سيدان the sheikh says that over here the sheikh says in this paragraph and that the 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 Muslim Ummah, the Muslim nation, has come together and agreed upon the death of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that the Prophet ﷺ passed away and this is Muslim consensus. There's no doubt in that. And nobody uh, goes against that, opposes that, except a foolish person, somebody devoid of in- intelligence, um, uh, and, and, and those say, they say, the Sheikh says that they say, oh, that the Prophet وسلم, didn't die. They say he didn't die. And they negate his death. And they negate death. They reject death. And they negate death for the Prophet. وسلم, the Sheikh says that this speech, this kind of speech, it is something that is not taken, it's dropped. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not carried, it, it's dropped. It's not taken seriously. It's not true. It is. Speech that is rejected and is clearly rejected, and it clear and and your own faculties, as in your own five senses, the senses you have, and your and and the affair is already clear as well from uh, Islamic history, and also, you know, it goes against your senses, and the Sheikh explains. He says, he says, for indeed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He passed away, and he was he was there among his companions. The companions, may Allah all be may Allah be pleased with them all. You know, they they washed him, they put him in the coffin, the white sheets. They prayed the salat al janaza over him. They then they uh, you know they uh, buried him in his grave. The Sheikh says, is, is this what you do with somebody who hasn't died? Because it doesn't make sense. Why would you do that to somebody who's alive? You know, so the evidence is clearly there, right? That when somebody passes away, this is what happens to them. And this is what the Sheikh is establishing here for us. You know, and then he was uh, buried, you know, in his grave. And this is proof for us as well. And also, this is why it goes against the senses. It goes against the senses. That uh, it goes against the sense that why would somebody be buried if they're alive? You know. So then uh, the Sheikh says, "Hadi Sunnatullah Azza wa Jal fi Khalkihi. Thumma in Rusul al-Ladina min qablihi. Sunnatuhu Sunnat al-Rusul al-Ladina min qablihi. Baqad matu. Wa huwa wahid min hum yamutu. Hada bi ijma'i ahl Sunnat wal Jama'a. Wa lam yuxalif fi hada illa al-mukhrafun al-Ladina yitalqun." So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph here, he says that this is the way of Allah. This is the way of Allah with regards to his creation. And also then what about the other messengers who came before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Right? This is he this is the way, right? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to his messengers and also the rest of his creation as we know when somebody passes away and all these messengers before him had passed away as well every single one passed away and likewise he did this is what the shaykh is saying and this is a consensus from the people of the sunnah ahl sunnah wal jama'ah and nobody opposes this and they do not oppose this except and whoever opposes the, they don't oppose it but the ones who do oppose it are from those Devoid of any sense 
and they attribute and they associate uh, 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 with the Rasul, uh, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know this that, that he's not, he's not, he did not die; that he's still alive. And then they they call upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they ask for things from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without actually directly asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And you know, as we all know, this this is shirk, and they do these sort of things, and they and they say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is alive. Which is obviously not true. And then the Shaykh says, "What the lilu ala mautihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qauluhu taala, inna kamiyitun wa inna hum miyitun, thumma inna kum yom al qiyamati inda rabbikum taqtasimun." Surah Az-Zumar, verse thirty to thirty-one. And so, if we go to that ayah, let's go there. Two ayahs. Verily you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will die and verily they too will die. Then on the day of resurrection you will be disputing before your Lord. So that shows us clear evidence from the Qur'an. Allah saying this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know that you know, death will reach you, right? And you will die. So the Shaykh says, And sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lama akmal Allah bihi ad وَأَتَمَّ بِهِ النِّعْمَةِ تَوَفَاهُ إِلَيْهِ كَمَا هِيَ سُنَّةُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى فِي خَلْكِ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ uh, وَالْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَالرُّسُلُ دَاخِلُونَ فِي هَذَا الْعُمُومِ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ فَالنَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَدْ تُوَفِّيَ وَانْتَقَلَ مِنْ هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَى رَبِّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ وَهَذَا ثَابِتٌ بِالنَّصِّ وَالْإِجْمَاعِ وَالْقِيَاسِ أَمَّا النَّصُّ ف ففي قوله تعالى إنك ميت وإنهم ميتون هذا إخبار من الله لرسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه سوف يموت إنك ميت أي تموت فيقال الذي يموت هذا ميت هذا ميت وأما الذي توفي بالفعل هذا ميت وأما الذي توفي بالفعل يقال له ميت بالتخفيف لقوله تعالى أو من كان ميتا فحيينا الميت هو الذي الميت هو الذي فارقت روحه جسده أما أما الميت فهو الذي سيبوت في المستقبل. so this is the last paragraph now and then we finish the lesson. الحمد لله and okay we've gone to nearly an hour but that's fine. إن شاء الله we should finish just before an hour. so then the sheikh says here that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when uh, when the message was completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deen was completed the message was completed the favor was completed and then Allah uh, 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 took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as in he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and as the Shaykh mentioned earlier Hafidullah that this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regard, in regard to his creation and then the ayah here uh, from Surah Al Imran, as we are all, uh, I'm sure all of us are aware of this one. Kulu nafsin zaikatul maut. Every soul, every soul shall taste death. Right? Everybody has a soul will taste death. And and the Sheikh says that the prophets and messengers, they are within this ayah. It applies to them as well. It's a general ayah that applies to all of the, uh, uh, the you know, the creation, insan, for example. So then the Shaykh says, yeah, so the Prophet ﷺ, he uh, passed away and, you know, his uh, soul was taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this dunya. And so this is confirmed by uh, by the Qur'an and also uh, by the Qur'an and the Sunnah and it's also confirmed by the consensus and also it's confirmed by extrapolation as well. Um, as for uh, the nas here, as in the the, the uh, textual evidences, then we have this ayah that the Sheikh mentioned: "Inna kamayitun wa inna humayitun." And the Sheikh says that this ayah. Let's just go to the um, uh, meaning first, so we can stay on track. Let me see where the reference is. Surah Az-Zumar. Verily you, O Muhammad, will die, and verily they too will die. Then on the day of resurrection you will be disputing before your Lord, as we read earlier. The Shaykh says that here, this shows us 
that this is information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing his messenger that وسلم, that he will eventually death will reach him. He will die eventually. He will die in the future at some point. And then obviously he did die. We know that, right? So it says, Inna ka mayitun, i.e. that you know you will die. So then the Sheikh says, You say to the person who is dying, Hada mayit. You know, he's dying, you say mayit like that, as in the ayah, mayit. As for the one who has died, like death has come to him, he's dead now, then you say mayit. So there's a difference. Mayitun, somebody who's dying, and mayitun, that's somebody who's dead. Similar sounding words, but just diff- slightly different, yeah? Mayitun, somebody who's dying, mayitun, somebody who's died. Right? And there's evidence from the Quran. And that's, as you can see, Allah mentions here in this ayah, mate, the word mate, right? Let's go to the evidences. Surah Al-An'am, verse 122. Final evidence for today. Uh, Surah Al-An'am, let me find this. I thought I did save it, but it's, um, just give me one second, I'll just pull this up. I thought I did save it, but I don't know where it is. No, I must have not clicked the button. Anyway, verse 122, we can find it right now while we're here. Verse 122. Is he who was dead without faith by ignorance and disbelief, and we gave him life by knowledge and faith. So this is what uh, the Sheikh quotes as evidence, showing that that word mate like that uh, means death, where death has occurred. Yeah? So it's important to just know the difference between the two words as the Sheikh explained to us, Alhamdulillah. And so the Sheikh says here that al mayit is a person, uh, it says uh, al mayit there's a spelling mistake in the writing here. So you can see here on my cursor, there's a mistake here. It should say al mayit So al mayit is the one, the Sheikh says al mayit is the one whose soul has left his body. As, and there's a mistake here, it should be mayit here. It says as for al mayit then... Uh, this is referring to somebody who uh, uh, will die in the future. So we could say to ourselves, Inna mayitun. Yeah? Like us, we are dying because eventually we will die. And every day that passes, we go closer to our death. So that would apply to us. If, you, if we said to ourselves, Inna mayitun, for example, or mayita, like that, then it's not true because we're still alive. Yeah? So then we just finish over here. So inshallah, we will continue and uh, next chapter will be Al-Iman bil Ba'ath. So having Iman or belief in res- in the resurrection. Yeah. So uh, we don't have many lessons to go now. I think we have about four, maximum five, inshallah, and we finish this book. So we've come a long way, alhamdulillah. So uh, we're getting towards the end of this book and inshallah, then we will decide on another book to go through, inshallah, uh, at the relevant time. So we'll finish there. Jazakallah khair. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته